imagine I have been given two vector fields. So x and y are two vector fields. And f is a scalar field vector. Okay? So as I said, we define things and we want to algebra of it. To algebra. So we want to create new things out of the existing things actually. So in other words, I would like to define what is the meaning of the vector field x and y. And their sum actually. Okay? So I want this sum to be a vector field as well. So in other words, a map from u mm -hmm. into the tangent uh, bundle of u actually. Okay? And uh, tell me what would be the easiest way. And I want to, you know, for example, apply it on a particular point of um, set, you know, set u actually. Okay? So what do you think? What would be the natural way to define it? So assign a vector a vector field to this sum actually. What name we should give to this vector field? So see, okay, think about it. What does this guy know? So, do you remember? If x is a vector field, xp means a tangent vector actually. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay, so from saying x plus y at p means that it's a tangent vector. So, what, what, what value should I assign to it actually? Some of those two tangents. The easiest way would be that, okay? <coughs> And uh, how about f x? So it's like f multiplied with some scalar multiplied with the vector field, and I want to see at the point p. Okay. Then what should be? F times f times. F is some function. It's a some function. Okay. Scalar function. After some scalar function. No, no. Obviously, it's going to be something like that. Yeah. Obviously. Okay. So what does it mean? That okay. Uh, we can we can show that indeed these two are scalar fields as well. So in other words, if we have a set of scalar uh, set of vector fields, it's closed under addition. And a scalar multiplication actually at least. Okay? Yeah. Pretty much shows that it will be like the space as well. Okay? So we have a scalar if function with the vector space spelling is prepared to be functions or like yes. yes. Space of smooth functions is not a field, but it's a ring actually. It's a ring. Okay, but well, what do you mean by ring? So it's like. Generalization of field. Huh? Generalization of field. It's space two operations. Yeah, yeah, okay, in functions you can say. So in field you have two operations multiplication and addition. Okay? And we know that, you know, you know under multiplication is group. And under, you know, uh, addition is some group as well, some kind of group. And, uh, but, huh? Abelian multiplication can be the group or addition can be the abelian zone property satisfied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and some additional property, you know, the compatibility of addition and multiplication. Okay. So, yes, yes. But ring means that, okay, with respect to addition, it's group, but with respect to multiplication, it's just semi group actually. So in other words, it, it, it just satisfies um, uh, associative and closure property. Yes, sir. Some group is that. Yes, yes, sir. Some yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Closure and associative property, not all actually. So it's like, okay, the ring is a particular, you know, particularly abstract thing that. So you can explore this, you know, don't worry about it. So what essentially I'm defining is that, okay, how to sum them and how to you know, multiply them with the scalar. Okay. To turn them into something. So 
So, you know, what I am going to give in this lecture, okay, to all our good students, uh, what I am going to, you know, to do in this lecture, I am just going to give you the overview. You have to read it for yourself. Now you guys are all mature, okay. So, I am not going to do, you know, I will not try to, I am not going to do all simple trivial proofs actually and, you know, everything. So, I am going to throw the ideas. You know, do examples, explain them as much as possible, and you know you have to, you know some of the proofs you have to do yourself actually. But I feel that okay, for this you don't need me. You can just read it and do it actually. Okay, so you have to work hard as well. Okay. okay. Alright, so let me define something, the last thing that I'm going to define today and maybe end here and uh, then I invite you to read the stuff from here and the, from the notes, the sections that I told you, try to go over the examples and we'll do the examples as well next time. So imagine, imagine I have a tangent vector xp. Okay, which is obviously what, as I said, that we always mean a point and a vector attached to it. Okay, point in R and a vector attached to it, and uh, and U be a neighborhood of the point P. So it's a neighborhood. It's a small part around it. Actually, a small patch part around it. Okay, and that. F be uh, the smooth matter. It's the infinity function, but F is smooth. It's the infinity of U actually, so it's like a function defined on U. So, in other words, F is some vector, scalar field defined on this small neighborhood of the point. So what I would like to define, I would like to define some things called the directional derivative. So see, one of the, one of the crucial thing in doing differential geometry and hence in, you know, Riemannian geometry is to define the calculus of manifold. You know, what is the meaning of, you know, differentiation on your manifold? This is what the key thing that we would like to define. Okay. Anyway, so directional derivative. Directional derivative. So we compute the directional derivative. Okay, from your previous knowledge, we compute the directional derivative of what? Sir, scale of scale of means. Please repeat your question. Ah, okay. So I'm saying that I have a vector attached to this. So I have this guy, P and X, okay. And uh, and I have a small neighborhood of P, and I have a function defined on it actually, which is which is defined on. So it's like okay, it, it throws the value from this neighborhood on the onto a part of R actually. Okay. So this is what that F is doing. Okay. So what I'm saying is that what is or what meaning should we give to the directional derivative? Okay. Let's recall from the advanced calculus. We compute the directional derivative of what? Scalar field. We compute the directional derivative of a scalar field. But why it is called directional? Because we want to compute the directional okay, derivative of things in a particular, in a particular direction. Okay. As I said, if when you will recall things, 
you will recall there is something which is called gradient actually. So I have a scalar field. Okay? And I have gradient actually. Okay? So what does the gradient tell you? So it tells you, you know, the change in F in all directions. Okay? And that in the directional derivative we say that we don't want all directions. We want the particular direction. I want to change in this particular direction actually. And then you do what? Multiply it with that, that point actually. Are you getting the point? Simply because that for the dot product tells you. Okay, dot product is what? Dot product is tells you that okay, how much of something is going on in the direction of something. So A, A dot B means that how much how much of A is going in the direction of B? Or the B is going in the direction of A actually. So how much of change is happening? So if I multiply this with what do you call? You know, vector x. So this quantity is telling me that okay, how much of change in f is happening in the direction of x. Okay? Okay, quick recall. What does the magnitude of f tell you? Maximum rate of change. So it tells you that you know, maximum rate of change actually is that okay. You know, it tells you that okay, how much of value um, you know, what would be the value of the maximum change in that? Okay, so as I said, recall, recall, recall. Recall your previous stuff. Alright, so, <coughs> I want to do what? I want to define the directional derivative of f in the direction of this vector x actually. Okay? Then, it would be what? It would be kind of interaction of this xp with f, isn't it? Because xp is what? You know, I'm calling this whole phenomena as xp. Okay. And I want I want to compute the change, you know, in f, but in the direction of this particular x. So I am. I, so so what do you say about this notation? So xp is the tangent vector. Okay operated on f, I am giving this as a name. So this is the directional derivative of f, of f in, the, you know, in, the, in, in the direction of vector x which originates at p, from p actually. The p is originated with So what you need to do? What should be the definition? So I need to compute the gradient of f in classical sense. What is the gradient? Recall correct. Okay, at P and take it dot product with that side. Okay, so this makes sense. Alright. Now, I can take the, the same thing to a new level. I'm ending actually. I'm take, I can take things into the new level. Instead of asking that, okay, what is the directional derivative of a scalar field corresponding to a vector, you know, a tangent vector, what would be the directional derivative? How can I generalize it? Tell me the, tell me the generalization of this notion. What should be the next thing? So, what question next should I ask actually? The directional derivative? Normal direction. Of f, but instead of one vector, it's a space. Vector field actually. Wouldn't that be a vector field? Would be a good idea. Yes. Okay. What would be the direction of derivative? Okay. Not with respect to you know in the direction of a vector, but the whole vector field. Actually. Okay. So let's just compute the direction in all possible directions in the with the vector field. Okay. And how are we going to do it? We know that you know x is something which brings me here. So x is something which takes a point P and throw you here actually at P. Okay, you then by definition actually. So agar I define that, if I want to define uh, that what is the meaning of the directional derivative of a scalar field. You know, in the direction of a vector field, I have to use this somehow. And give me a guess. So you see, these things are natural. So I don't need to tell you, you, you know, you can just, you can just, you know, 
generate these things for your satisfaction. Okay, so what should we do? So I need to define x of f. Give me the definition for x of f. Where x is what x is the vector field. Give me the definition for this. So what do you think about what I need to do? So instead of taking one x, let's talk about all x which are, you know, uh, which are the outcome of this vector field activity. Okay? So essentially I would say that xf is what and I'm going to denote it. Okay, let's let's use another notation. Sometimes I'll use this. Uh, like this is the what we call the more convenient notation. Something that we used previously, if you remember, in vector calculus course. So the gradient of f but in the direction of x is what simply that take the gradient of f and take its dark product with what? X. Take its dark product with the small x. But what is the relationship between this capital X and small x? Okay. So if x, x is throwing you, so x of p is throwing you to the xp, okay, then this small x is corresponding to this, you know, what do you call it? Okay. Are getting the point? So it's a, it's a bit abstract later. Say the same thing. Okay. We're going to start again from here. Okay. And do examples and so on and so forth. So, what I want from you checklist. Read. Read section. You know, put as much as energy you want actually because you are learning another, the third important pillar of mathematics, which is geometry. And this is the first serious geometry course in maths. Okay? Understanding geometry is enough, I think, whether you pursue geometry in your future or not. Especially for people with a specific orientation, they need this hell lot of geometry. So read sections from me. 1.1, Exactly. 1 1.1, 1 1.2. Not only read, do exercises. There are small set of exercises based on that actually. Okay? Obviously read notes. Okay? Read notes. Lecture from and see the lecture one on classical calc uh, lecture one or two? One lecture one. Whatever it is, but on classical curves like this. And if you have time, see lecture 2 as well, because I'm going to follow his way of introducing lecture basically. Uh, you know, the parameterization for the curves like Okay, so if you see it in advance, it's going to make more sense. Sir, I have a very good code itself defined in here. In principle, yes. intuition. 